Hey guys, it's Mike here and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Super Reviews and Predictions in which I'm going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super Episode 51 and then give my thoughts and predictions for what's going to happen in Episode 52. But before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date and see all of my Super Reviews when they come out as well as all of my other videos as well. Well, a lot of stuff happened on Dragon Ball Super this week and there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So without further ado, let's get started. So essentially this episode left off in the same place that last week's episode ended, and that is with Bulma presenting everyone with the other time machine, this time machine that Cell came to the past in, creating the main timeline and basically splitting everything off even further in the first place which allowed everything in Dragon Ball Super to unfold. And essentially, we basically hear and see a flashback in which we see that Bulma explains how Future Trunks and everyone originally saw the time machine back in the Cell Saga and we got Dragon Ball Kai footage. And then strangely, we ended up seeing newly recreated and newly animated footage which showed them actually find the time machine and then Bulma basically asking Trunks for the second time machine so that she could have it for her own purposes. And basically, Bulma wanted to look into the time machine, but she couldn't really figure it out, so she just kind of forgot about it until right now. However, now she happens to have future Bulma's notes, shows she can actually repair the time machine so that they can end up using it. However, repairing the time machine is going to take some time, so Goku goes over to Whis and asks him for training, but when that doesn't pan out, he instead decides to teleport to King Kai's planet. However, once he gets there, King Kai isn't very happy in the least and says that he's not going to train Goku, likely because Goku destroyed so much of his planet and has constantly basically been a pain in King Kai's neck. We also see that Vegeta is going with his own training, going into the gravity chamber room inside of Capsule Corps. We then flash over and we see that Black is in the future and it appears that he's doing some kind of training of his own, and he explains through flashback of Goku and then taking various poses that essentially he can remember the pain of a fighter and grow stronger as a result. Basically, which seems very akin to Zenkai's. After this, Bulma asks her parents and Dr. Briefs and Mrs. Briefs, as well as the Pilaf gang to help her rebuild and fix the time machine. After Trunks finds out that Mai is actually one of the Pilaf gang, he speaks to her and explains to her basically what happened in the future. And we get this flashback in which we see Black first arriving, and Trunks explains that when he first arrived in his initial attack, he already wiped out one half of the human population. Those who were left over as survivors decide to form resistance cells, and Mai was actually in charge of one of them. And they had an encounter with Black and led him into a, an area that was rigged with explosives, but naturally and ended up not accomplishing anything for them, Trunks had to show up and basically save her. Although in the end she essentially saved Trunks as she ended up firing this kind of Taioken or solar flare flash gun that allowed them to escape. However, he also explains to them essentially how Black was able to kill Mai in his future, or so Trunks believes, as in the last episode we saw that Mai is in fact alive. And after this, to wrap up the rest of the episode, Bulma and the Pilaf gang and the other ones helping her begin to start working on the time machine. Beerus and Whis are outside and begin to speculate about Black and his power, and Whis believes that he has some sort of hint as to who the true identity of Black may in fact be. So this was Dragon Ball Super Episode 51 and what happened in it. But was this episode good or was it bad? Well, I have a list of pros and cons right here that I'm going to list off to you so I could break it down and come to the conclusion of whether or not I believed it was good. So let's start off with the pros. First off, let's start with the animation. Once again, in this episode, which has been the general theme of this arc thus far, the animation was very good. It's such a big and drastic improvement to be watching these episodes and the animation that we're getting at this point in time, and then to say go back to the Resurrection F arc or certain episodes like, you know, the typical Dragon Ball Super episode 5, and see the complete drastic shift in animation quality and clearly the budget on display in this series. But certainly the animation thus far in this arc has been very good and I hope it continues to follow suit in this way. And whatever little issues are with the animation, I'm hoping that they'll just fix in the Blu-ray so we won't have any kind of inconsistencies whatsoever. Secondly, I really enjoy the attention to continuity in this episode, something I've kind of railed against Toei since the beginning of this series, and really even before that. Continuity is something that's incredibly important in a long-running series so that the audience can continue to follow along with the story 
story and not constantly be taken out. And in this episode, explaining why they have that time machine, which it, I thought was shocking that they remembered in the first place. But the fact that they even had that time machine, Bulma explaining how she got the time machine, us seeing flashbacks to Kai, and then the new footage in which we see that Bulma had received the time machine the day before Trunks left and went to the future, all of that was really cool, and it also kind of explained why Bulma had not even fixed that time machine yet, and I guess why it still looks like it's covered with moss since she basically forgot about the thing. But even Goku going to King Kai's planet and seeing it still being a mess and King Kai being pissed off at him, the fact that Black is talking about something that seems akin to Zenkai's, and Trunks of course remembering and talking about all this stuff from the last time he was there, really shows that they're truly paying attention to continuity, at least in this episode and these episodes thus far for the most part, and it seems like Toei might have heard our concerns, which is why it seems like they're now trying to possibly improve their series in that way, or it could just be a gigantic coincidence, but if they did hear the concerns of the fans in terms of continuity, then that once again shows you that talking about cons and negatives is not really a bad thing, because sometimes, just like when Toriyama complained, it'll bring about good changes in the series, and in all series and movies, what have you. I also really liked the fact that there was so much exposition in this episode, especially the flashbacks, or flash forwards, really, to Trunks's few Future, in which he's talking about Black coming, killing the vast majority of the human population, them trying to fight back and Black still winning, creating the threat and actually making Black that much more of a threat, and I really like the fact that in those flashbacks, we got a little bit more context about Black and why he's doing it, because he believes that the Earthlings or the people of Earth or humanity are the only mistake of the gods, and in their place, he's going to try and fix that mistake by killing all of the people of the Earth. And that, I guess, continues to explain why he's still trying to go after Trunks and kill people, I suppose, in the past now with Goku and the rest. It's really interesting that they continue to give us more and more hints, and we continue to see that this Black character really seems to be something that's a lot more dynamic than all of the other characters that have come in terms of villains in Dragon Ball Super thus far, except for maybe Beerus. Frieza, we barely got much explanation as to, you know, what he wanted to do aside from him wanting revenge, and then he died. There was no real villain of the Universe 6 arc, it was mostly just people fighting, you know, in a tournament. So it was definitely really nice to see, in this case, Black getting a lot more character development, because that's something that a villain truly needs to be a great villain, because ultimately, if you can't relate or understand a villain's motivations, then why even care about the villain, or why even, you know, become invested in the story, because it's basically just boring if we don't really know or care about the villain or even the heroes whatsoever. So Dragon Ball Super is definitely doing a good job as far as that's concerned, and the execution of an idea like an evil Goku in the first place. I also like the fact that once again, some of the side characters are being used more in this arc thus far than they really have been in other arcs. We got to see Mr. and Mrs. Briefs, but also the Pilaf gang are actually doing something of use in this arc, where they literally did nothing of use in the past two arcs, except I guess kind of help Frieza and his men, you know, revive Frieza in the first place in the Resurrection F arc, although their role in the series was actually significantly diminished comparative to what it was in the actual movies. But it's nice to see them doing that. It's nice to see that Trunks and Mai are, you know, once again, establishing that kind of relationship between the two, although it was incredibly creepy in this episode, but I guess that Mai is still a 40-something-year-old woman inside a, I don't know, 12-year-old's body? However old Trunks and Goten are supposed to be at this age, because they've never really explained it in Dragon Ball Super yet what year it takes place in, or why Trunks doesn't look exactly like Trunks will in his flashback in next week's episode, but hey, at least they're using these characters in in some way. It's better than not using them at all. As for the cons in this episode, it kind of did feel like not that much really happened. I did like all of the time that they did take to try and, you know, to set up the different elements in the episodes and to give flashbacks and exposition. All that was definitely good, but not really anything changed in terms of the plot between the beginning of the episode and the end of the episode, as at the beginning of the episode they introduce the time machine, at the end of the episode they're going to start working on fixing the time machine. So, you could really say in terms of plot, motivation, and movement, nothing really happened in this episode that 
furthered it to that much of an extreme. It was more of a character-driven episode, so for those who are more plot-focused, you're probably not going to like that as much, but those who are more character-driven are probably going to enjoy the episode more, but I still feel like maybe there's a good equilibrium where some of the plot moved a little bit more forward, you know, rather than not really moving forward at all. And also, considering that they hinted at Goku and Vegeta training some more in this episode, I would have at least liked to see some of that so that their characters can, I guess, continue to evolve and develop their powers, and maybe we could get some scenes kind of explaining a little bit more, since this whole episode was basically expositional, so it would have been nice if they explained further, you know, how God Key works, or they explained further, you know, how the form of Super Saiyan Blue loses stamina, and then they try and correct that so that they could try and make the form superior in the future, or they hint at, you know, the Super Saiyan Red, which they kind of jokingly called it, or just the normal Super Saiyan God form that they reintroduced in the manga, maybe they could make some kind of overtures to reintroducing that in the anime, um, maybe as a more mastered version of the God form, which in blue is basically like the Super Saiyan 3 because it burns through your stamina so quickly, but gives you an even bigger boost. But even seeing Vegeta, for example, training in now thousands or higher levels of gravity than he was trained before would be very good in terms of power continuity and would allow us to further understand how the powerful these characters are in relation to other characters and to see their actual development through their training, because that is kind of one of the things that we haven't really seen for a while, development through their training. I mean, Resurrection F, they were both Super Saiyan Blues, and then now in the series, they're both still Super Saiyan Blues, so we haven't really seen any kind of development over the past arc in terms of their training, except you could say perhaps Goku's Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, which we never even saw him train or even hint at until he introduced it, so seeing them further explain, you know, their improvements, how much stronger they've gotten, and, you know, the forms would have been something I definitely would have liked to see. And my final con would definitely have to be Trunks and Mine. Seriously, that shit is crazy. Creepy. Now, for the next episode, it seems like it's kind of straightforward as to what's going to happen, and in the next episode preview, we hear Nazawa saying, Hey, this is Goku. Trunks is going off to meet Gohan. It's been a long time since they've seen each other, so Trunks will be surprised that he's become a scholar. Whis, you've got a clue to Black's identity in Universe 10? In that case, take me with you. Next time on Dragon Ball Super, Master and Pupil Reunion, Son Gohan and Future Trunks. Don't miss it. So it seems pretty straightforward what's going to happen next week's episode. Goku is going to go with Beerus and Whis to investigate Universe 10 to find out what exactly is going on with Black and to see if there's any sort of connection. We even see this green Kaioshin appear on the screen who also appears in the opening credits. So they're probably going to try and make some connection between the two and see whether or not this guy is in fact knowledgeable of Black, the one behind Black, or maybe even Black himself. And it seems like Trunks is finally going to meet up with Gohan, his old master in the future timeline, and of course his best friend. And he's going to find out that Gohan is not this badass teen that he was the last time he left, but rather he's become a scholar and a family man. I'm just hoping in this next episode they don't just use the episode to write off off Gohan basically forever, and he becomes no use in this arc whatsoever, because that's going to really annoy me, especially considering that Toei in the previous two arcs have kind of tried to build towards Gohan accomplishing something in the series. Especially with Resurrection F, where he ends up turning into a Super Saiyan become more powerful than ever. And then right before the Universe 6 arc, when he trained with Piccolo for eight months and said he wanted to test his might, and he knew he had to keep getting stronger and stronger to protect his family. So I really hope that in this next episode, so we're not just going to see, oh, I'm much weaker than before, I'm a scholar, I'm not a fighter, I'm never going to fight again, you could fight for me, because really that'll undo again what they've established with Gohan and his character in terms of character development, and once again it'll be yet another regression for no real reason whatsoever. I don't see why it would be so hard to write Gohan actually accomplish something of no, even if he doesn't have to be the one who defeats the main villain, and even if he gets beaten by the main villain, writing him to do something, considering that he has so much fans, and again, you once again built him up, would really not be that difficult. I mean, anyone could really think of a decent storyline for Gohan to do something with, at least in the background while all this other stuff is going on. 
so I'm hoping that in the next episode they're going to not go that route, but I won't be surprised whatsoever if they do, and I'm going to be annoyed if they do because, again, they're going to be backtracking with Gohan's character, and why even bother doing all the stuff they've done so far with him if they're just going to abandon him altogether. But overall, this has been my review of Dragon Ball Super Episode 51 and my predictions for Episode 52. Let me know your own thoughts down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and as I always say, stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. What? What do you want? Why are you still watching the fucking video? Do you expect me to say something? Well, I know what you expect me to say, but I'm not going to say it. Rubber baby buggy bumpers.